Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about the China Rail Dongfeng 7 or DF7 series. The DF7 has been in continuous production since 1982. It's gone through several visions, but again, they're still being made and the early ones are still being rebuilt. So a lot of them are in service and you can see them today if you want to. Even though they're designed for shunting service, they've actually been used for long haul service and some are even being exported to countries in Africa and other places. So hang on, I'll get into this in just one moment. If you head over to China and hang around marshalling yards or short-line railroads, there's no doubt you'll see a DF-7. As with a lot of Chinese locomotives, these have their origins in the late 1970s when China's economy was starting to pick up, they were starting to have more connections with the West, and they were starting to fall seriously short on the amount of rail tonnage that they could haul. Unlike the United States that seemed to be going towards a unified type of locomotive, the Chinese still preferred fully cowed locomotive for long haul operations and therefore needed more shunting locomotives with exposed rails and walkways for short haulage and switching operations. They did prefer six axles, however, since it gives you greater traction at lower speed and these would never get fast enough to really worry about the drag that six axles would induce. These are the rough equivalents of the SD24 through SD30 series and they produce anywhere from about 1600 to 3200 tractive horsepower. Initial versions did have some teething problems to sort out, particularly when starting and with low speed traction, those never quite worked well. It took about two years to get those sorted out. But then starting in 1984, they did and started to produce the DF7 series en masse. Since a lot of locomotives in China were either developed at the same time or improved upon at the same time, the DF7 does share several parts with many other locomotives, including the DF5 and DF4 series. Depending on which version of the DF7 you're talking about, the prime mover produces anywhere from 2000 horsepower to around 3600 horsepower. Both turbocharging and supercharging were used depending on the application. The engine was the ubiquitous 24260 series, and they were usually 12 cylinder, but occasionally 16 cylinder versions were used. It seems like the DF7 was an extremely flexible platform because many versions and many experimental versions of this were created, including versions for mountainous terrain, desert terrain, cold terrain, you name it, they modified this when they had to, sometimes only for a couple versions, sometimes for quite a few. There were even full cow versions developed for cold areas, particularly very cold areas where they were having problems with other locomotives freezing up. I suppose in this way the DF7 series is very similar to the 40 series of EMD locomotives. If they had a problem, these things were flexible enough to change them out and do what they needed. Many DF7s have been exported and are still being exported to this day. For instance, this DF7G is running in Cuba. In fact, it's running in Cuba in January of 2023. Others have been exported to places like Africa, and actually I'm gonna have a whole separate video on that. So if you like the DF7, please stay tuned for that. In fact, this jack of all trades characteristic has turned them into mainline locomotives when they need to be. For instance, one of the models that I'm gonna show you is one of the models that made the inaugural run from Tashkent to Xi'an, China, which is called the Mung Bean Express, since that's one of the primary products they exported. These were taken along the rail line known as the New Silk Road, which runs all the way from Moscow to Beijing. The locomotive is so ubiquitous that many companies have actually made models of it. The models that I have are made by Chang Ming, which used to be known as Charming. After receiving models from literally all over the world, or at least companies that are based all over the world, I have no doubt that Chang Ming Models is making the best HO gauge models in the world right now. They usually have no fewer than six, but sometimes as many as eight lighting options, working fans, smoke units, smoke units that actually work, although some of these did have problems in an initial run. I actually have three DF7 models, but I will not be showcasing one of them here because I'll talk about that particular model in a different video altogether. 
Even though I can read a lot of Japanese, my Chinese is utter garbage, um, so I'm gonna have to use the translator on a lot of these, but I can figure out what most of it is. If you look, they fill out all 28 function options, and again, a lot of those, I think eight of those are lighting options, working fans, working smoke unit. It's actually double pulse, pulse smoke unit. Very impressive. Nice little short history on the back, and a lot of it's just uh, details on the model. I will have a separate video that comes out that discusses the history of model railroading in China. It's somewhat short, except if you're talking about high-end collectors, but most of these models at this price point are made for collectors, and you can tell. It has like a display base, it has an entire display case, actually. A lot of collectors I've talked to in China never even take them out of these little cases. They like showing them off. They don't have enough room for a layout, but I'll talk about that in a separate video. Here is the second DF7. I have one DF7B and one DF7, which is nominally DF7A. And they're pretty well. The thing about Chang Ming is they produce so many different options. Each one of the options, if it's if it's a different number, uh, actually show all the differences in real life. They don't make one mold and then just slap a different number on them. They're all true to the prototypes. And before I go any further, I want to definitely thank for perpetuity, my friend Mike Wu. I'm like, it's technically not his first name, it's what I know him as. Uh, Mike Wu for helping me obtain these. Uh, these aren't necessarily easy to get, and he's always able to come up with them, so I appreciate it. I can say that this is the finest scale model in my collection, or at least one of the three finest scale models in my collection. So you can see in the walk around, each of those handles is a separately applied part. They're all separate, and they are attached to this ABS plastic body shell, but it's one of the best ABS plastic body shells I've ever seen. It doesn't have the bloating that you normally see on ABS. They did a really nice job. Uh, I noticed on a lot of these models, particularly from a company like Chang Ming, the number boards and everything are raised. You don't have to apply any separate etched plates. They're already on. Those little window shade things move. They actually work. The interior, including the dials, are fully painted and fully lit. The horns are made out of brass. And as you can see here, these plates, just like the real ones, are actually put up on risers. They're not just extra thick plastic and then bolted down. They actually have separate risers. Um, you can see through the grate up there, the intake grates. They did a really wonderful job on this and everything. Right, the gas cap is separately painted, separately applied. The chain there you can see is a separate chain. It's an actual chain. You can actually move it around. And my indigenous SRs from Oscision did that. So that's really nice. I think that's a great feature. All right, the intake baffles here at the end are, are see-through. And of course, a lot of American companies do that, but no company does all of these things in one model. This model has inspection lights on the trucks. So you can see it there and the interiors are fully lit up, including a guy that has a orange vest on, another one that's smoking a cigarette. There he is. So this is one, like they ran out of um, oxes because of how many lighting options they had on the exterior. That's why these panels don't light up that they used every single auxiliary output they could for all of the lights that are on this thing. It's pretty impressive. These models both have the working radiator fans with the movable slats. And I think in the North America anyway, um, Aurora International has released a Canadian SD60 that does this, but I'm pretty sure they're sourcing it from the same place. One thing is there's just not enough aerodynamic uh, there's not enough aerodynamic resistance in each of these slats to hold them open while the fan's running, but it clearly, it's clearly working to some extent. I don't know how these work in real life. I assume that they open as a whole and close as a whole, but at least I've got to give credit where it's due. Changming models almost always have working suspension parts, you can see here, and also they model the individual traction motors. They don't put like a big large plate over these like you see with... Um, most models, um, I'm not sure if Scale Trains does this or not, but you know the only thing is you can see um, the axle running through them to drive all the wheels, but that's how much detail they want to put into each model. The smoke units work out of two exhaust ports and they're pulsed to the engine sounds and they work very, very well. Though, like I said, there are some reports of some of the early versions of these 
melting down, but mine seem to be fine. I've actually checked them for temperature, and yes, they do get a little bit warm because of the smoke units, but everything that I think will melt the actual plastic. These models also come with built-in capacitors that are good for about one and a half seconds of drive time. I've seen photos of this Mung Bean Express, and it looks like it carried pretty much uh, containers. I don't know, you know, I've got a very limited view of what may be going on here, but I had a bunch of uh, Chinese rail flat cars sitting around and a bunch of containers. So I figured that would make this a really, really nice train. Well, I'm curious to know what you feel about them. When I got them, I was like, wow. You know, at first I didn't want them because I'm like, do I really want another sort of non caled you know, road switcher again? But then I realized, wow, these are actually very, very cool models. And I know I'm really going to love them running them on my track. So I'll keep working my way through the Chinese models here. I've got several that I want to show you. And, you know, if I get another shipment in that's been held up because of covid well i'll have to go into those too so this may take a while this is certainly going to take longer than the new year celebration that i thought it was going to take i'll let these run out for you i hope you've had a good time learning about them and watching them i know i do I really actually you know i even really like the way these are painted it just the more i look at them the more i like them so until next time happy model railroading take care stay safe i look forward to seeing you bye for now Thank you.